welcome to our first Rise and Shine of the third series that we've done. So this is our third year doing this, gathering women from the surrounding community to spend an hour and a half together to actually be in community while at the same time thinking and talking about things that matter to us. So welcome, we are so glad to have you here. So I do want to just say to you, we, this is so much more, this experience that you are participating in is so much more than just this one and a half hour rise and shine workshop that we gather for each month. I want to actually place it for a moment in a larger context so you understand what it is that you're actually participating in. So let me try to do that. So the first thing I would want to say to you is that the House of Shine is an organization that at the end of the day, we say that our purpose is to help you find your purpose. Really, that's what we're trying to do. And the way that we do that is by helping and creating content and material and teaching tools that help unearth a person's, what we would call, shine your strengths, your hobbies, your interests, your needs, your life experiences. How do these things come together in one human being put here on earth to make a contribution that is different than anybody else's? That's why we exist, to help people figure that out. And I believe if we can't do this, if we, this group of women who decide to come together once a month because you know that you are capable of of living a totally happy, fulfilled life. That is why you show up month on month. Some of you show up because you want to hang out with your friend and that's all well and good. But many of you come back month on month on month because you know deep inside that you are capable of living a full and rich life doing something that you're uniquely wired to do. And it's a daily choice we make so we can never think that we've just checked that box and we're going to move on. It's a daily choice. So we, we come together once a month and it's kind of like getting back in alignment. So now my job is to actually explain to you why we have this image up there. For the first time in history, in the year 2008, we became a world that lives more urban. So there are more of us living in urban settings than in rural or settings than ever in the history of the world, right? So for the first time, we are more urban based. Now, with that comes a lot of other things to think about. So with this urban living, there are more distractions. And we have talked about this. There are distractions come by way of our phones, competing demands. I mean, there are more distractions available to us as a result of living in these urban settings. So this year, I was thinking to myself, what is it that I want to talk about? And one of them was nature, right? What could we learn from nature and lions and tigers and bears? Nature, getting back to nature, is essentially the fix, that it is the fix. And I decided I was going to go with nature because, frankly, I got to thinking, like, the oldest bee is 100 million years old. Like, that's true. Hundred, I think it like lives. It's in. It's like in, in Boston, something now in Burma or something. But it's like a hundred million years old. And there's a tree in California that's still alive. That's five thousand years old. I mean, nature's been around a really long time. It's it's working. Like they kind of know what to do. So I just thought that why would I uh, kind of invent this topic and go down this route when I could really do a service to all of us as we are living in busier, more frenetic lives with more things at our fingertips than we've ever had before, how can we craft a message for a year that would get you kind of back to the basics, thinking about what we can learn from the simplicity of nature? So that's what we're going to do, but it's going to be fun and interactive and you are going to see. We are going to get you thinking about things. That is kind of the point of us coming together, is to get you thinking about things that you don't always have the time to think about because you're busy living the busy life. So what I started doing and thinking about is, okay, I want to know more about lions because I had that picture of the lion up and I knew that you know, I got, that's my jumping off point for the year, lions. So lions, tigers, bears 
are also considered keystone species, a keystone species. So what is that actually? What is a keystone species? And what it is is a species on which other species in, a in an ecosystem largely depend, such that if it were removed, the ecosystem would change drastically. And I cannot think of anything or anyone more to be more considered a keystone species than women. We are a keystone species. So it is it just stands to reason to me. When I read that, I thought, yes, that is exactly it. We are a keystone species, and this is why this hour and a half that you give yourself once a month to think about how you are doing in relation to you, how are you doing for you, is so important because the influence that you have on your ecosystem is huge in big ways and in small ways right? My ecosystem. You might have down your entire church community. You might, you, th th they, these are, again, kind of large categories under which there will be more. And so we have to acknowledge that these things, that even though we feel privileged and happy and lucky and we're, we're relatively okay where we are in life, even though that might be the case, it still can manifest in stress. So one of the reasons why it's so important to understand the full notion, I mean the fullness of our ecosystem, because stress could be hanging out here on this little branch that you didn't even acknowledge, that we throw this word stress around and maybe in some ways we use it so much that we normalize it and we, we make it seem like, well, you've got it, I've got it, we've all got it, so just buck up and get over it, you know? And maybe on some level, we do need to learn how to manage the complexity. To me, that's what this represents. This represents our lives are complicated. They're more complex than they used to be. And with that comes reaction. I mean, to every action, there's a reaction. You create things in your life, there's a reaction to that thing. Can be good and it can be positive. So it doesn't have to always be negative, but it, our mind goes to that place. My complexity brings me a great amount of joy, but I still need to acknowledge that with the joy comes the, the challenges of managing the complexity. Again, going back to us as keystone species, women as a keystone species, living in an ecosystem, influencing it all the time. In mass, we actually can influence like the environment, right? Like climate. As, as a nonprofit organization, we want to earn the right to be heard by you, right? We're gonna be here every month delivering these workshops because we believe so intently in the work that we are doing for women, for children, for educators.